Greetings, goblins. Today we're talking about rules to steal from Mouse Ritter. Let's get into it. Greetings and welcome to Elder Goblin Games, the universalist TTRPG channel where the DCs are made up and the stats don't matter. Okay, so admittedly, I struggled pretty hard with this one because Mount Ritter. Mount Ritter. Because Mouse Ritter is such a tightly knit game that it's hard to really cut and paste any one rule from it. It's just so well built that really you should just run this. Try Mouse Ritter. It's one of my all-time favorite RPGs. It's maybe the best role-playing game for kids and new players alike. And plus, it takes like 10 minutes to read this book. It's short. Look at this. Page count is around 40, 42, and a lot of that is just random tables. Okay, so let's get into it. What are my three rules to steal from Mouse Ritter? Now, like I said, it's a little bit hard to just grab the rules from this game because they're just so tightly knit into the fabric of this particular game, but there are a few things we could pull away from it. I should start by saying that Mouse Ritter is a roll under game with three stats, meaning whenever you're trying to make a save, which everything in the game is a save or it just happens, and you want to roll under one of those three stats, which are strength, dex, and will. So it's either doing something strong, doing something fast, or doing something smart. That's it. So with that out of the way, I want to talk about rule number one to steal. The easiest initiative system you will ever see in any game. It's so easy. I overlooked it twice when looking through the rules. Technically in the book, this is written underneath the surprise rules section, which is why I might have missed it. Alright, you ready? If your enemy is surprised, then you act before them. If not, you roll and see if you roll under your dex save. If you do, you act before them. That's it. That's initiative. And then you just keep that order for the rest of the combat. Ah, what a breath of fresh air. You're not calling out and asking for every number in order to see who goes before who or anything like that. Just roll. If you roll under your decks, you go before the enemies do. That's so easy. I don't know if there's a system that's easier that's not just straight up automated like a number for decks or something. I think that's awesome. It lets you still roll dice. If for some reason you have like disadvantage, then it's going to be harder to go before your enemies. This is such an easy and fast way to do initiative that doesn't pull a lot of time away from the action and doesn't result in a loss of momentum at the table. You can even use it in games like D&D because you still have a deck stat and there's a likelihood you might roll under it. And let's say that you have several players who roll under their deck stat. Well, then you guys can just decide the order you want to go in. It's that easy. And then just stick to that order for the rest of combat. There you go. Boom. We're done. Let's move on to rule number two to steal. Okay, in order to talk about this rule, we have to look at the Mouse Ritter character sheet. This is it. Pretty simple, right? Now, Mouse Ritter isn't the only game to ever do this, but Mouse Ritter uses a slot-based inventory system right here. In Mouse Ritter, you carry an item in your main hand, your off hand, on your body, and then you have about six things that you can carry in your pack. For those of you who aren't counting, that's about 10 items. There are a lot of other OSR-style games that use a slot-based inventory system, and a lot of them have around 10 slots. Either that, or they use something like 10 slots plus your strength modifier. So on average, you have about 12 to 14 slots. Slot-based inventory is perfect for those of you who don't love tracking finicky things like weight for items. And just to take it a step further for Mouse Ritter, a lot of that slot-based inventory uses these handy little punch-out cards that have shapes for each item. So if you're using something like an oversized weapon, it's just naturally going to take up more slots. And then to really simplify things on top of that, most items have about three uses. If you remember our usage die from the Black Sword Hack video, it's very, very similar. You might even say it's the exact same thing. The only difference is in Mouse Ritter, you don't want to roll high. So a four or a six, usually on a D6, uses up one pip or dot on that item. Magic works a similar way in this and is really interesting. Spells are a physical tablet or held item with a rune scrawled on it. Typically they have three uses. However, in Mouse Ritter, you can roll three dice at the same time, and whatever number of those come up as a four or six, get an extra usage marked off. Same for things like 
torches and rations, and even armor if you want to track things that way. But along with this slot-based inventory is an idea that really excites me as a game master. Conditions that take up a slot of inventory. For example, an injured mouse has disadvantage on strength and dex saves, and one of these babies has taken up an inventory slot. Now, most of these conditions are cleared after things like a meal or a full night's rest. But I think having to write a condition down in one of your precious inventory slots in a slot-based inventory system is a really quick and fun mechanic to use for things like conditions. Also, while we're here, can I just say, go do yourself a favor and pick up the Mouse Herder box set. It comes with all these awesome little handouts to use for things like inventory and conditions, plus a really easy and clever way to track things like turns and time. Not to mention this awesome tear-off character sheet pad. I just love it. It's a great game. Okay, so what's number three on my list? Now, admittedly, of all the rules I'm talking about stealing here, this is going to be the hardest to just grab and put into any game. But it's the way that armor and attacks work in Mouse Ritter. In Mouse Ritter, your armor soaks up or prevents a certain number of incoming damage. Attacks always hit. Move over, draw, steal. And instead of the way hit points normally work, Mouse Ritter calls them hit protection. This is the amount of damage you can take before you start losing your stat points. What do I mean by that? How this works specifically in Mouse Ritter is that once you're out of hit protection and you start taking damage to your strength, you will have to make a strength save or take what's called critical damage. If you do take critical damage, you become injured and incapacitated. Resting or healing while you're at maximum HP restores those stat points that you've lost. This might be a good alternative for really deadly OSR style games like DCC or Shadow Dark when characters are at lower levels. Now I realize this is a big ask because you're not only changing the way armor might work, but you might also be changing the way attack rolls might work as well. I hesitated to even add it to this video, but I just really love this rule and I wanted to highlight it here. It's one of the things that makes Mouse Rider so fun, fast, and engaging. Not having to roll to hit speeds up combat so, so much. It's incredible how much you can get through in a single session. Now, I'll be honest, it was pretty difficult to actually find three rules to steal from Mouse Herder because it's just such a good game that you really just want to play it as is. There are a few games out there that I can say this about, but you really can't steal any rules from Mouse Herder. It's just so tightly woven together that it deserves to be played in its own right. Well, that's pretty much it for Mouse Ritter and it for me today. So like and subscribe, go check out the Patreon and subscribe over there. So I was trying to think of a way to really connect with the community and do something with Patreon. I've been hesitant to put any sort of tiers that actually cost money because I don't really have, other than advice, I don't really know what I have to offer to a larger community. And as I was thinking about it, I thought, you know what? I haven't been playing as many role-playing games lately. Maybe I should do some sort of an online game and select some of the Patreon players who are interested to run that game for. And the idea that excited me when I thought about this was a game where we have a loosely tied together series of shorter, maybe one-shots that are run in different indie role-playing games. Some of these games, perhaps, that I could run for you in a Patreon game. So you might have the same characters built in each different game, but the same story that's happening overall. If that sounds like something you would be excited about, go check out the Patreon, sign up, and I'll eventually try to incorporate a level where that could be a possibility. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you check out Mouse Ritter. I hope you find other great role-playing games to play that work for you and your group. Thanks for watching, and as always, make mistakes, choose chaos, and most importantly, have fun. Fear right, pray the colony survive.